This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Farm Bureau Health Plans has been serving members and protecting their health for 76 years. Learn about our Tennessee roots at FBHP.com. From the Bet MGM studio at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park with Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Special guest. Yes. Special guest alert. Yes. Former Titan. Special. Special. Uh-huh. Former Titan sixth round pick. Yeah. Jason McCourty, now of NFL Network. We can't really do the whole reference to your Patriots days because yeah, it's yeah. kind of, you know, it's a little tough for and us. And that involves my brother. I don't like talking about him. He gets annoying. He, so, he yeah. gets a Fair. lot of attention. Yeah, too much. So <laughs> that's part of being on that team in the Northeast. They just get a lot of attention. But that did work out pretty well for you, too. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. A little hardware to go. So it was, it was, you get a chance to play with your twin brother. Like, you can't beat that. So right. those, those three seasons were pretty, pretty incredible. And now NFL Network. Yes. Good morning football. A lot smaller of a locker room, just as much fun, um, a lot less taxing on my body. Uh, mentally, I get to use all of that stuff. But, yeah, uh, Good Morning Football NFL Network has been a lot of fun. It's been a huge learning curve, too, though, of just being thrown into the fire and having to pick up. But you came in at the same point with the host, Jamie Erdahl, and it feels like the chemistry clicked right away because the two new kids came in with the two old kids and because you had somebody to bond with over the newness of the experience, it never appeared that you were a fish out of water. No doubt about it. Me and Jamie would complain to one another about Peter and Kyle. So <laughs> if they did something, you, you would just go to each other like, can you believe this? But uh, no, Jamie's awesome. And I think we just celebrated this past Tuesday. The 25th was our one-year anniversary uh, since starting the show. And I remember I met Jamie. It was the month before, at the end of June, we did a little audition down in NFL Films in Mount Laurel, New Jersey. And that was the first time she had already got the job. I was kind of figuring my way out and see if they were going to hire me. And from that point on, we went on a week before we started on the show hung out a little bit and it's been awesome I think to your point you're both starting a new endeavor Jamie was doing sideline reporting for CBS so now she's coming in studio on a three-hour show I just walked off the football field so this is a brand new experience and Jamie became my buddy because there were a lot of TV terms that I didn't know sure. I'm, I'm, I'm being thrust into fire no football well, I'd be like Jamie um what, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, what's a line producer? Mm-hmm. Wait, why do we have 18 producers on one show? So it was really cool being able to start together and kind of go through that experience uh, with each other. Let me back up one second. How did you even get in the mix for Good Morning Football? So last April, I, I finished the 2021 season. I ended up doing a list, Frank, uh, on my foot. Don't know whether I'm a player or not. NFL Network does a broadcast boot camp out at L.A. at the headquarters there. And I go out there. It's about a two, three-day experience. And you you learn and do everything. And there's CBS is there, NBC, Fox, NFL Network, Amazon. Everybody's there. And you're talking to some of the producers and people that have done this for a ton of years. And you go there. And the first day, you learn about what's it like to be on the radio, to do a podcast, to call a game for TV radio, be in the studio. And the very last day of the experience, it's a full-on audition. So we wake up, you put your suit on, they do your makeup, you go, you sit in a chair, and we call the game uh, a two-minute drill for uh, the NFL and for uh, radio, for TV and radio. Then we did a podcast, we did a studio segment, we interviewed somebody. Uh, the funny thing, as I look back, Richard Sherman was my partner there. So me and him are interviewing each other, we're hanging out the whole time. A year, months later, we're both, I called some Thursday night games for Westwood One Radio, and he obviously was doing Thursday night football for Amazon, and we're sitting there on the sideline before the game. We're like, just think about that. Back in April, we were out here doing a boot camp. Now here we are, both transitioning to the media and doing our thing. And from there, I left that boot camp, and I had an opportunity to work with Westwood One to call games on the radio, uh, the audition for Good Morning Football, and there was something else with CBS Sports Network that just didn't come to fruition. But three opportunities, and I was like, do I still want to play? And I was just like, I got an opportunity for life after football. I'm going to go ahead and take it and uh, save my body to rest. So it's been it's been a really good transition. That's unbelievable that you were able to have that experience, be able to get in a room where you're learning all those skills and then get the opportunity so quickly to yeah. use them. Did you ever have a moment where you felt like, 
this is, I mean, this is a live three hour show where you're being asked to do everything. You're not just calling a game. You're not just doing an interview. You're doing all kinds of different stuff. Did you ever feel like, okay, what am I doing? Why oh, am I here? <laughs> the, whole, the whole time. Um, I'll give you the game part first. So my first game ever was Cleveland Browns, a uh, game in Cleveland against the Pittsburgh Steelers Thursday night football. And I get the email from Howard Dinneroff, who works for Westwood One, and it says that I'll be calling the game with Iron Eagle. So my initial reaction is just like, they're going to let me call a game with, I've never called a game in my life. I've done an a audition for a half or a quarter, and they're about to let me call this game with Iron Eagle. So the weeks, days leading up to that game, I was just so nervous because you don't know what to expect. And something that helped is the week before the game I called, um, the Vikings were playing Philly, Monday Night Football. Kevin Harlan and Kurt Warner do the games for Westwood One. I went there for a half and just watched them. I just sat in the booth and just watched the way they interacted, the things they said, the whole nine. And that was really cool. I'm a guy that learns from being able to watch. So seeing them and then listening to other people call games helped a lot. Uh, but with Good Morning Football, it was just being there every single day. You learn so fast. But I would watch the other three. We'd have guests come on and – the part where we start talking about the game, that's easy for me. I've sat in meetings for 13 years. But then when you bring a guest on and you got to start asking them questions or now that you're in the teleprompter and you're reading it and you're sitting up right and you're trying not to fumble on any of the words, but you also want to seem natural. You don't want to look in the teleprompter and just read line by line. So those were the parts where, like, I'd get really nervous before the show. I'd have my script in front. I'd read everything that I had in a prompter to try to memorize some of it to kind of build that that comfort level. So it's it's come a long way in one year so I'm just excited about I think I got in not knowing how passionate I was going to be now I follow all the people that talk about sports media and all of that and now there's a, a legit passion to want to get better at it you're you're a full-on media member now it happened but we've got to go back to calling the game because it just occurred to me how many games have you actually listen to on the radio or watch an entire broadcast because think about it high school you're playing football college you're playing football nfl you're playing football this is a great point you're not hearing the broadcast because if you're watching film of somebody you're not getting it's the not broadcast you're not watching for enjoyment you're mm -hmm. not listening because you're curious about a game because you've got it's your true. own game you're it's preparing true. for so you didn't have maybe the cadence of what a broadcast would be in your head already, right? No, not at all. And I'd watch a ton of football. I'd watch my brother play. Mm -hmm. But I'd be lying if I said I was listening and hanging on to every word that Ian Eagle and Charles Davis were saying or what Jim Nance was saying on this one. Like, you're just watching the game, and I'm watching the DBs or what the offense did or what the defense did. And – radio never until i got the job i was like well i need to go listen to a radio broadcast and Sorry, see Mike. and see what it sounds like <laughs> i knew touchdown <laughs> titans i knew that part though <laughs> thank you so you know thank you. uh to that point because you got to be in the car on a mm -hmm. sunday i'd be parked in front of the tv but that's still watching. i mean even if you knew what mm -hmm. i did that's the play-by-play -play. that's not that's the not color the yeah, that's, that's not, not the, the color same thing, yeah. that's no, no doubt mm -hmm. about and it so i wonder in some ways if it's not almost better because you didn't have a preconceived notion of what that job is. So that's the way I took it. Even for the Good Morning Football, I, will, I watched Good Morning Football, but never the way that you need to watch it as you're preparing to go on it. And I thought about going back and watching Nate Burleson, who sat in my seat before, who obviously is amazing. He's, He's on yeah. CBS now. Yeah. And I was like, well, I don't want to do that. I said, because if I do that, I'm going to have in my brain already the things Nate says, how he goes about it. And I don't want to be Nate. I want to make sure when I sit in that seat, I'm my own person. So to your point, when I was kind of studying, getting ready for it, I wanted to listen and pay attention more to when do I talk? Like that was the biggest thing for me. We're doing radio. And I remember when I did my audition at the boot camp, there was a touchdown. It was a two minute drill and the guys are over there dancing and they're having fun. And I didn't let the play by play guy finish saying what happened because right. I was so excited of what just happened on the field. So learning that cadence of like, it's OK when Mike Keith stop talk, stops talking, I can give it a breath before I say, all right, on this play, X, Y and Z happened just to make sure he's done. And the other part on the other end is shutting up where I may have 
have this great point to make, and they just broke. They walked. They broke the huddle, and they're walking to the line of scrimmage. I have to let him set the play up and be able to tell people, especially if it's the radio, because they can't see what's right. going on. Mm-hmm. Now, next thing you know, there's a whole play happening, and they have no idea what just happened. So you have to let the play-by-play guy do his thing. Jason McCourty will now expand his repertoire on CBS. You'll yeah. be calling games on Sunday. You're with Chris Lewis, Mm -hmm. and you have a third partner, right? Ross Tucker. Ross Tucker, who's Mm -hmm. a good guy. Um, How have you been preparing to take on that role? I'm still figuring that out. So the way I've gone about it, uh, Robbie, who works in our PR department, he connected me with Charles Davis. So I was with Charles out in L.A. We had an NFL Network Talent Summit. So I just peppered him with questions for 10 minutes. I had already had my document filled out of everything I wanted to ask him. I just had a conversation with the partner, Ross Tucker, uh, for about 20 minutes of asking him a ton of questions. So that's how I'm preparing. Obviously, the, the easy part is the watching film part. You're watching football and you're learning, especially the college part, because I've been in the NFL for the past 13 years so going back watching and the names part is going to be the the (laughs) toughest thing of figuring out all the names the nfl isn't as hard because i talk about it every single day Mm -hmm. all of the guys and then from playing you know more than just the superstars and you pride yourself on that so that's been my preparation so you guys are also going to do some college yeah where, where are you going to do that? There'll be some Big Ten games. Oh, so great. still figuring all out how all I of didn't know gonna, that. Yep, I'm sorry. Yep, I apologize. Yep. No, no. So it's it's been a, a ton of fun, of, of excitement, but very nervous of seeing how it's going to be. Calling a game for a radio, someone's listening. You know, Mike, someone's listening. They can't see the game. Right. So it's up to you to be extremely descriptive and set the scene for them. Well, now when you call the game on a TV, somebody's watching it, and your producer dials up a replay, and he's showing how the offensive line made a great pull block. But on the play, I was looking at the corner covering. I can't talk about the corner, what he just did, when the people at home are watching the offensive line. And so those are the tricks of the trade that I'm going to really have to learn. And I think the one good thing is having other people in it. You can learn and ask them questions as long as you're able to humble yourself and realize you're not the best thing to step in the booth uh, since they created football. How much does your skill set, which I think it really is a skill set, of preparing for games help you now preparing for shows or games or whatever? You're obviously looking at very different Mm -hmm. things, but you'd think that kind of the routine is the same, right? Yeah, very much so. When you're watching film, you're not just looking at the ball, but you're looking at all 22 players on the field and seeing what they're doing. And not only the film part, just my 13 years in the league, and I always joke with my brother, he spent all 13 years in New England. Belichick was his head coach, and it was more or less the same system. Fortunate for me now, as you transition, I've played for probably eight different head coaches, four or five different general managers. So you get the perspective of so many different people that now when you watch football, I think a little bit about what Dick LeBeau used to teach me in the defensive meeting room. But then I go to what Bill Belichick said. Oh, then I had Greg Williams in in, uh, Cleveland. So you have all of these personalities and different ways they go about things that are all in your head that when you see a play, you think about a million different things that you can talk about on that one play. Well, you've been through it. I I mean, considering you were a six-round pick, you – you got thrown into the fire as a rookie. <laughs> you became a starter and one of this team's leaders. Mm-hmm. You went to Cleveland for what turned out to be a historically bad season. Yeah. You join your brother. You win the Super Bowl. Yep. I mean, it, it's like you've seen all of it over 13 years. You can reference in your memory something. Yeah. At, at any level of football and say, well, I've sort of been through this. Here's what's happening there. I mean, what a library you have. That's the fun part. My last year in Miami, it's my 13th year. I'm 34. We had drafted a kid, Javon Holland, there, who was a rookie. He was born in 2000. Like, literally, that's the, the age difference. And you're cool. sitting there, and when you become older as a vet, to your point, it's all about storytelling. So as different things come up, you're telling a story about a guy my second year in Tennessee, a guy like maybe a Keith Bullock or Javon Curse or Kyle Vandenbosch. I tell people all the time, KVB, I get here my rookie year, and he was obviously, you know how hard he worked. He'd be in the weight room, and then we go out there for practice, and his eyes were bloodshot red. And I was just like, why is his 
oh, it's red. Is he okay? Is he okay? <laughs> and they were like, they were like, no, those are the red contacts you can get. I was like, well, we didn't have those at Rutgers, so I had never, <laughs> I had never heard about these. So just the ability to be able to tell a story about something that a guy might be going through, and it's just like, well, what you're going through, somebody else has already gone through it, whether it's on the football field sure. dealing with management, contract, coaches, or whether it's in your personal life dealing with a significant other, welcome in a new baby or something of that nature. You can give a guy advice, whether you experience it or you know somebody that experienced it, that goes a long way. This is the OTP with Jason McCourty, former Titan great and now part of NFL Network and CBS Sports. You're on the CBS. Unbelievable. That's the, crazy. That's the Tiffany Network. What's wrong with these yeah. people? I don't know what they see. see. That's what I tell Charles. We went to college together. And I said, oh, wow. And so when I saw that come out this week, that, that whole rundown of all the different yeah. teams, I said, Charles, you're on CBS. <laughs> you're on the Tiffany Network. He goes, I know, crazy, right? <laughs> anyway, I got to read this. <laughs> Open a Titans checking account from Pinnacle with at least $100 and a reoccurring direct deposit by August the 18th, and you could get two tickets to five Titans home games. Can that be right? Am yep. I reading that? You're reading two it right. Two tickets Ooh. to five Titans home games. Details at TitansBanking.com. Titans checking from Pinnacle. Play hard, bank easy. Member FDIC. What time does your day start, Jason McCourty? 4.40, the alarm goes off. 4.40. And do they send a car for you? They send a car for me. So no complaints. I'm not complaining what time I wake up. It's early. Uh, I've gotten used to it. I'm out the door probably by 5.15. Get to the studio around 6 a.m. We're on air at 7. It's go time. We finish the show, jump in the car. I'm home by 11 a.m. So wow. You know why they do the cars, though, right? No. It, just to make sure that getting through traffic and that somebody's picked up on time yep. and there's constant communication. Oh, that when you nice. when you work the morning show in radio, the overnight guy would give you a call to get you up. Oh. Now sometimes you didn't get up. Well, yeah. Because you would a problem. Oh, big problem. Yeah. Yeah. But in this way with television, yeah. they make sure you're there. It's not because Jason it's McCourty true demanded a car Maybe i did but did. no I'm fine. Okay, cool. uh, but to your point when you get picked up the driver sends a message to dispatch right. that you've been picked up one morning i had a different driver he never sent that message next thing you know they're calling him like where are you right i'm just like no we're on schedule we're up, but you have to to that point of, of making sure you're there on time obviously some somebody has to go on air so yeah long time in makeup you know what? It's a beautiful thing being bald. So hair and makeup uh, for me yeah. at most four or five minutes, just and I'm and I'm and how does that dome? And you're go good to there, go. I go in there just to hang out. <laughs> we, we just go in there in the makeup room, and everybody's laughing and joking. So and you don't get a clothing budget. So I get I get somewhat of a clothing okay. budget, but I'm so stylish, Mike, that they just say, hey, just <laughs> just, what you just, got. just bring your own stuff in, you know, and you just, just impress us with what you got. <laughs> you are. <laughs> no, he, he is. Wears, he That's wears like, great stuff. It's he, funny okay. because you it's always real. did. You always wore yeah. great shoes, mm -hmm. and you were one of the stylish guys on the plane. I'm trying. I know, but I mean, it was. Uh, well, now I see Kevin Byer and Derek Henry, well, and these guys are runway models with some I of know. the stuff that they're putting on. I'm I mean, like, it's a whole different world now. Yeah. I mean, it's it's fashion central here at the Tennessee Titans. We've really yeah. upped our game in a variety of ways. Derek's clothes wouldn't fit me. Some of those outfits, they're so tight. <laughs> so I, I know it's, it's a totally different ball game now. <laughs> but some guys, I mean, you know, people are clothes horses. Yeah. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they, they love it, and that's what they're into. Some people love of watches yeah. so, i mean the, the, i like like you i like shoes yes. and it's a it's a great thing um the the different things they throw at you on good morning football <laughs> the different topics the one morning they had you sing i remember oh, um, there's not gonna be a clip <laughs> no no, no we don't have a clip okay. but it was we can find it one. was fantastic you got jamie erdahl laughing so hard she basically couldn't finish the rest I'm just of happy the you segment. said it was fantastic. It was all fantastic. Right. <laughs> My wife did not share those sentiments. She did not. <laughs> not at all. It was great. Okay. But I mean you do some goofy yeah. stuff. You do some hardcore football. You do a lot of things in the middle. You talk fantasy. Mm -hmm. I mean is that one of the allures of, of doing the show? I don't even know I, I knew the extent of the things we were going to be doing. Um, what I love about it is it's an opportunity to not be too cool for school. Me singing on national television, as horrible as the voices I have, but being able to laugh through it and kind of make fun of yourself is just 
awesome and like you said the laughs that we share on that show are genuine because it's all live there's right. nothing that's taped so when jamie's standing behind me listening to me saying how bad it is but seeing how hard i'm going for it she's dying laughing we had a segment uh tom pelicero was on the show this week and we were coming up with different names for pass catching running backs because the game has changed so much and pelicero goes first and he comes up and he goes i'm gonna call running back swingers and from that point on <laughs> yes the entire segment went nothing to do with football. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that, laughed, that went way wrong. All I looked at was Kyle Brandt, and I was like, I can't wait to see what you have to say about this. And he <laughs> continued to say he has a giant pineapple outside his door. And him, <laughs> Here we open go. For so yeah. Th yeah. that part of the show, like, and that's the part, I think, when we're playing, or even for you guys, when you're doing this on an everyday basis, like, no, I can do more than just talk about football. I have other interests. I like to laugh about things. And that show allows us to do it. But I, when, when Kay and Nate were there and now with you and Jamie and um, Kyle and Peter, all the way through, I have liked the balance of that show. Mm -hmm. Because that, that could – with, with people who take the NFL as seriously as we do, yep. mm -hmm. it could go horribly wrong if you <laughs> stray too far. But – you have just the right amount of goofiness. Does that make sense? It definitely makes sense. And we're a show that's on all year round. All year round. Yeah. So yeah. we're on in the off season. So we have to do a Star Wars segment on in the off season sometime in May to just switch it up and then bring it back to football. I think that's the key thing is we find ways, whether we talked about our summer vacation, we were all and we're putting pictures up, but we're relating them to storylines that are going on in the NFL. It may not be for everybody, but I think it's seven o'clock in the morning Eastern time when we come on air six o'clock here so if i'm waking up and i want i may not want the x's and o's of how the tennessee titans are going to beat the houston texans this sunday and that deandre hopkins has to run an out like it may be like let me wake up let me have a cup of coffee first and then you see something pop culture wise and you're cracking up laughing i think that's the part of it whether we're talking about and we go into archives with nfl films old players different things we try to keep it fresh and original last Good morning football question. Mm -hmm. Best in studio guest since you've been there. Ooh. Oh wow. Um we had I'll, I'll I'll go with football one right now, but we had um who do we just have? We had Dalvin Cook in this past week, and that was a big time for us because of everything that's gone on, is going sure. on with him right now, the visits and all of that. But the football players, who cares about them? Okay. We had Kelly Rowland come in oh. to the studio. Yeah. We had Babyface come into the studio. We had Brett Kreischer come in, who's a comedian. He has a uh, he calls himself the Machine and does stand up comedy. His whole thing is he takes his shirt off on air. So me and him are both shirtless on air. The comedians and actors and different people we get come on the show, like that part of it for me is really cool. Because they love it. They love it. Eric Stone Street. Uh, oh. That's so cool. He, and how funny the, the they whole, are. And the person. whole Andy Reid brother oh bit my. that he does. And then I <laughs> ran into him and Paul Rudd in Kansas City. Paul Rudd, who is Ant-Man Stone Street, who is on um, I can't, uh, Modern, Modern, Modern Family. Family as Cam the whole time. And I'm hanging out with them, too, because I met them on good morning football that's awesome and it's cool for me because i'm a fan of their work so that part of it uh meeting the having guests come in that are in totally different worlds has been a lot of fun all right titans fans it's always game on with duncan you drink a lot of coffee in the mornings no coffee no wow. coffee well you oh. should drink duncan <laughs> whoa thanks a lot for ruining this segment <laughs> whoa yeah we just lost a I like, sponsor i, but like, okay, I, I love their donuts though they, okay we they, we're, okay we're back on yeah. yep it's always game on with duncan so grab a <laughs> coffee and kick off the action whether that's drinking a cup of coffee on your way to the game or having a donut with Jason McCourty or grabbing one to go before watching the game at home Duncan is always there to help you get your game on just like the pros we need to be at our best come game time which is why Duncan is the most important part of your game day ritual because it's always the best call for football America runs on Duncan. Wait a minute. You're waking up in the 4 o'clock hour every morning yep. and you're not consuming coffee. And he has kids. Yeah, yeah. and you have children and, yeah. like, a life. Yeah. What do you do? What do you? What does a person do in the morning if they don't drink coffee? Like, that's my first stop is the coffee pot. Somebody slap you like John Henderson used to get? <laughs> I'd probably get a foot in the face from one of the kids who had a nightmare. Three gremlins, got a wife. There's a lot going on, but I've never liked the taste of coffee. So oh. even while Nobody I likes the taste of I coffee. Liked, I love coffee. It's, as long as I, it's I from Duncan. <laughs> yeah. See, now, see, you go and grab your coffee. I'm going to get myself a vanilla frosted donut, maybe some sprinkles on okay. top, and I'm all set. I get th There's a little sugar in that. But well, I can't, coffee, I can't do. Like, if I 
me, I, if I'm absolutely dead tired, mm-hmm. I can do an energy drink or something in the morning. Uh, okay. That's it. I, All right, wow. can we talk football now? Yeah, I'm sorry. All that right. just, she, she's still, my, my brain just I know. exploded. I know. <laughs> You're here. You've seen the Titans, albeit briefly. Yeah. Anything surprise you? Surprise me. I, I, I'll, seeing DeAndre Hopkins out here is just really cool. Um, I think for me, Hop came into Houston when I was here. I, I can still remember. I, I hate to talk about this. We're playing down in Houston. We go into overtime. They bring this rookie in, and I'm like, all right, he's on my side. And we lose the game because I have him covered in the back of the end zone. He goes up, catches it up top, gets his feet in. And you that plane ride home when you just lost the game as one of the leaders, players here, was just awful. And those were the battles with him. As uh, We were laughing about it out there on the field. I, was, I always felt like I covered him well. But I couldn't finish the play because somehow he would come down with the ball. So coming into practice, it's almost like one of those things where you're like, you see he signed, you're like, but he's not going, he's not going to be there. And then you come out here and you see him. And I know there's so many people that say like, hey, when he was in Arizona, this guy didn't practice. He didn't. And he's out here working hard, mm-hmm. working his butt off in the slot, outside, one-on-ones. Uh, I saw him tweet the other day, like, and they say, I don't practice after making a, a, a beautiful catch on Fulton and one-on-one drill. So I think that wasn't a surprise, but the feeling it gave me when I walked in here and I saw him out there was just like I got a little giddy inside to see he's going to be wearing number 10 uh, for the Tennessee Titans. I'll say another guy, Arden Key, was a guy that – He's a ball of energy. I said, what's up to him? After he's like, oh, what's up, man? I was just like, oh, okay. I don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't hit me. Don't hurt me. But I, I, I called two of, three or four of Jacksonville's games last year, and he's a monster. Mm-hmm. And him coming over here, Howard, Lan- Howard Landry being back off injury from the ACL, obviously Simmons, Jeffrey Simmons in the middle. I'm excited about that in the defensive front, what can happen up front. How are you going to run the ball on these guys? Tier Tart, uh, you called his interception last year. It was beautiful. Oh, thank um, you. Those guys up front, it's going to just be awesome to watch. Do you got a football question? Oh, yeah. No, I definitely have a I'm football sorry, question. Being, thank I'm you, Mike. I know you got really excited because he said you had a good call. <laughs> I get it. Um, we, you and I were able to do a little a little chat back and forth yeah. for oh, NFL wait, Network. Wait, 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 and wait, one wait. of the things that Amy we talked about. I got to be on NFL Network, Network she for, was a star too. for Again. exactly 35 seconds. Again. And it was this great. Year, they asked her back. Um, yeah, it was magnificent. <laughs> but I – Honest to God, only did it because J Mac was coming to do wow. it. Wow! Yeah, so I that's a real that. thing. I wanted, I wanted to hang Throw out with out. my friend for a while. Um, but you and I had the opportunity to talk about Ryan Tannehill yeah. and what this camp means to him, and just all of the pieces that seem to be coming together mm-hmm. for him this season. How exciting is it to watch an offense kind of form and grow? almost right before your eyes here at camp. It's awesome. And I, I think the part of that, especially for Tannehill, this is a guy who went through some injuries last year. And just you think about how he got here. He came here from Miami, came here to be the backup to Mariota, gets in and just starts killing it. And now next thing you know, last year they draft Malik Willis in the third round. And all the hype that was around Malik coming out of Liberty. And there was Tannehill about uh, being a mentor, all that other nonsense. And then – The next year they draft Will Levis. And Tannehill's still the guy in the front. And you think about this training camp in this season for him. This is a guy who's 35 years old. He's a veteran in this league. He's started in every place he's been in. So whatever you want to think about him, this is a guy that's been a leader and a consistent player throughout his career. And sometimes we overlook consistency because we see the amazing play by Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen jump over somebody. This is a guy that has been able to play at a high level for a long time. And if you're him, I, and I haven't asked him personally, but if I'm him, I'm coming into the season. I'm fired up to be around my guys. But there's a little part of me that's pissed off. Like, I love my Titans, but I'm also coming in to show y'all that I'm the guy. Like, hey, I, I love Will back here. I love Malik. I'm going to bring him along with me. But, like, you're not going to need them to play until I'm ready to hang them up. And if I'm Tannehill, that's the approach I have. And I get a guy like DeAndre Hopkins. I'm working with him. I'm building that connection. And then I'm pulling Traylon Burks a, a side too like come on like this is year two you're going to be taking the next step and now he comes in Burks as now I know the expectations of what it's like to be an NFL player versus last year you have this star in A.J. Brown and he's traded around the draft and the next thing you know they draft you and just all right 
He's AJ Brown's replacement. Get in there and do what he just did. And it's just like, well, no, I'm still a rookie. I'm still figuring this thing out. So I'm excited as hell for him, Roger McCreary on the other side. Guys in that next step who had good rookie years, Chig Okonkwo, like, I didn't know who this kid was. And he's out here making one-hand catches on his helmet. So that part of the game, being out here at training camp, seeing it up close and personal, seeing that Derrick Henry is still bigger than everybody else around him, that part of it has been a lot of fun. I guess the last two Titans on the roster you played with, Derrick Henry and Kevin, Kevin Byard. Byard. Yep, their rookie years. And you wow. think about the success that they have had. I was with Kevin Byard at the NFLPA meetings, and we're talking about this past season. And whenever I talk about my Titans days, as soon as you guys see me, you're like, yeah, it was, it was, it was rough while you were here. I'm sitting with the media, and they have the good guy award now. And the first thing I think Teresa says to me is like, too bad they didn't have it when you were around because it was hard then to talk to the media. And me and Kev were talking, and I didn't even realize that last year was his worst season mm -hmm. as a Tennessee Titan. And his expectation of what it means to be here is way different than mine. Right. And it was cool to hear him say that of just like, we got to get back to the standard because the standard is different now. This is a team where it's not just like, all right, we win seven or eight games and now we're okay. Like, no, we're chasing a championship, a Super Bowl, and that's where we're trying to get to. Well, I think – though what was so important about you and Delaney and you know several of those other guys of that era is you held us together through some rough stuff I mean the Ken Wisenhunt thing didn't go well nope and you know John Robinson came in and obviously Amy Adams Strunk had mm -hmm. taken over the franchise and John always said he goes listen I inherited some solid players and some solid people we didn't have to fix the locker room. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that was a lot because of you and those other guys. And I, I know a Super Bowl ring means more, but you sure should be proud of that too. Oh, no. When I retired, I got the questions of just like, where is home for you as far as playing? I was just like, I played eight years here. Like, this is a team that gave me a chance with the 203rd pick in the 2009 draft. I got married here. All three of my kids were born in Franklin in the hospital there. So this for me is always will be home when it comes to being an NFL player. Um, being down here yesterday and coming in today and seeing Amy, seeing you, Mike, and seeing Ashley behind the camera over there, I, I can remember the last and People don't realize that when you're 2-14 and 14 and you're 3-13, and 13, it's tough. Sure it is. Mm -hmm. But you still find ways to find enjoyment in sure. doing something that you grew up dreaming about doing. And it, build, it brings you closer together because everybody on the outside is just pointing fingers and talking about you. So my eight years here were unbelievable, uh, just some good times. And we started this all. We talked about relationships and people. There's some really good people here, and I'm always happy to be able to be in the building here. All right. I got to read this about our friends at SeatGeek, now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. The deal is finalized, and SeatGeek is the newest member of the Titans family. If you haven't heard the name yet, get used to it because you'll be hearing it a lot this season. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So Titans fans can fan. She likes to say mm. that. She enjoys I that. I think if you say it with authority, it's, it really gets people Jason going. Did you know Jason McCourty is doing the Tennessee-New Orleans game on CBS, the opener? I had heard. The I last heard time tell. you were there was Mike Malarkey's first game as interim coach. Mm. Tennessee Titans victory. Yep. Touchdown pass to Anthony Fasano. Fasano, Jersey on the, guy. On yeah. the full throwback yes. across the field. Forgot about that. Is it, it, so, so you've done some Titans games before. Yep, yep. Is it still a little hard to kind of not be? Because you had that Oilers jersey on the other day on TV, and <laughs> you you clearly you clearly liked it. I mean, it, it, oh, you it, clearly it, liked well, I mean, it. He, he's well, he's, we, fa he's we, family. Uh, yeah, he's yeah. Fa Jason McCourty is family. <laughs> of course. It's different. We got those jerseys, and they all have our name oh, on the back. And then so it's James a thirty. So is Earl Dahl, is, is Schrager, is Brant. I'm like, well, like mine is for real. For like, real. like <laughs> this 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 was this was a thing at some point. So. Well, no, of course. I, I, I think when you get a chance to be around so many people that you know and that you love, like when the Titans are playing, I may have never spent time with Ryan Tannehill as my quarterback, but as I'm watching that game, I'm like – Jared Puffer in the media department, if he can go and win a Super Bowl, if Mike Keith, Amy Wells, there's so many people, Tina Tuggle behind the scenes that you're around, Matt and Joey uh, in the equipment sure. room. Like you're rooting for the team because you so badly want to see everybody within the organization win because when we were 2-14, it wasn't like – it wasn't like – 
Todd Torcelli and talk in the training room or Matt. It wasn't like they were in the training room and they weren't trainering as hard right. because we weren't a good football team. Everybody still shows up here early as heck in the morning. You're still putting the same amount of work in and you're not getting the results. So even a year I went in Cleveland and it, I get released here after after my eighth year. I go to Cleveland. <laughs> we don't win a single game. And here I am sitting in Cleveland. It's negative. feels like negative 10 outside. We're watching the Titans in the playoffs. And I'm just like, and just perfect. The year <laughs> before I got here, they went to the playoffs. <laughs> the year after I leave, they go back to the playoffs. But even as you're watching, you're pissed off that you got cut. But then you're watching the game, and uh, Jarrell Casey gets a sack or a right. rack pole or Wesley Woodyard. I'm just like, those are my guys. Sure. Like, I so badly want them to win because a guy like Casey, like, we were here in the struggle That's together. Right. Like, I want to see those guys succeed. So it's always, yeah, that balance. That's cool. Do you still have the Oilers jersey from 2009? I got the, I got the helmet, too. Wow. Look yep. at that. These are better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No offense, Mr. Adams, night, but, night, yeah. but the Houston Oilers 1981 to Tennessee Oilers 1997 yeah. 98 with the red face mask yeah. and oh, yeah. love your blue. The, fact, the, the jersey and yeah. the collar says love your blue. Love right. you, huh? They were awesome. Yeah. 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 I love it. It's just thank pretty. you. Thank you for thank you. Just first of all, thank you for what you did for us when you were here. Appreciate on it. On and off the field. Uh, I reached out to my friend Charlie Uke mm -hmm. at, at NFL Network when I read an article that they were considering you, and I told him, unsolicited, and I'm sure he went, why are you doing this? I said, if you don't hire him, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. you, you are the most natural person for this role that we've had in the whole time I've been here, and we've mm -hmm. had some people who've done good media, but I knew that, that you would have this kind of success because... I knew just like being a sixth round pick, having to work your way in, you would approach it the exact same way. And it is a craft and it, and it does take some work. Mm -hmm. And uh, even Coach Max found that out over the years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, but even if you're natural, you know, just even if you're a great natural talent in sports, you still have still to have refine. Yeah. And you are clearly doing it. We are so proud of you. Mike, I appreciate that. Uh, so many years being around you, learning from you as well. And that's the fun thing. I spent eight years here, and you do a lot of these things. And you get a chance to talk, and the whole time we're talking, you're seeing how somebody's doing something. And Charlie told me, you said that's so, all. Uh, I just greatly appreciate that. Our friendship, you know, whenever you text sure. me or anything, we're able to come down here. I was coming up for NFL Negro. He's like, would you hop on? I'm like, of course. Yes. However long you yeah. need me, I'll do it. So fired up to be with you guys. We spent a lot of times here. All Good. right, so what else do you have, Amy? What would you like to conclude with? That was just a lovely moment. Oh, it was? Uh, well, and I'm trying not to cry. I have no control over my yeah. faculties. It's just, it's so good to have you back. Oh. It's just, it's good to have family back, you know? It is. And that's what it is. I love it. Mm -hmm. Good morning football, 6 to 9 Central, every morning on NFL Network. Jamie Erdahl, our friend Jason McCourty, Peter Schrager, and Kyle Brandt. Yep. It's a really good show. Thank you. It and is. keep it up, and we'll see you in New Orleans. We'll see, uh, I'll see uh, you we'll there. We'll see you in New Orleans. For Jason McCourty and Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for joining us for the OTP.